Welcome to day eight wrap up here of the Double X Commonwealth Games in Glasgow. I'm Mossy, he's Robbo, and this is Glasgow Gold. Many people out there will remember the 1938 Games in Sydney, but I can tell you this one absolutely eclipses that one on the day eight, even though they had only seven. Robbo, huge day. The headline, Sally Pearson got out there and made a bold statement. The Kookaburras absolutely thumped Scotland. And the search for Jumpy continued. The people are going to get that everywhere. What happened to us today? Mossy, as you say, a huge day once again. Um, a two-sport day for us. We got into the hockey early on. We've seen a lot of the hockey roos. We've covered them a lot on the show. But uh, the team we haven't got around to yet was the Kookaburras, the men's Australian hockey team. And we weren't disappointed. We got in there. I uh, managed to jag a couple of free tickets at the gate. Uh, big thanks to the volunteers in the uh, Team Canada outfits. So our manager and myself got in to join, uh, to join you and Cal. And that was great. And, um, you know, Scotland, they really defended hard and, and gave it to the Aussies. And they only lost 5-0. I thought they'd go down 15-0. Uh, so they did pretty well. Um, I did a bit of coaching. As you can see here, they invited me back to the coach's box, and um, it was great. And Mossy, I, I think the I think they've only lost one game, the Kookaburras, in the entire history of the Commonwealth Games. Uh, that was back in 98. That's fact, by the way. Yeah, that's, that's fact. fact. That was to South Africa in, in the Kuala Lumpur Games. They haven't lost a game then. I don't think they've even let, let a goal in since then. Um, they are destined for gold. Pencil them in straight away. And we missed him last night, Robbo, but being at the hockey, we sent Cal out there to ask some hard-hitting questions to Kookaburra legend and friend of the show, Simon Orchard. Right. We're in the corner with Cal, joined today by the number three for the Kookaburra, Simon Orchard, and uh, just had a 5 0 win against Scotland, but more importantly, Orchard, what he's doing with those breakfast uniforms? They're atrocious. Breakfast uniforms are a terrible way to sort of get team bonding going, mate. I think right. every morning two different guys come out, wear a uniform of their choice. Uh, the whole team looks out the window and then has to kit up in that uniform. Uh, there's been some absolute shockers. They're all going on my Instagram page, so you can jump on there and have a look. Uh, we've got one more day tomorrow, so I think last day for the boys and the coaches take over that's where the real really? fun starts right, so. right. because there's been neckties on sweaters there's been all sorts of stuff. all sorts of fashion faux pas blue and green should never be seen uh, I don't even know what tomorrow is going to have in store well Christian Dior contacted me and said they've got to stop right? it's got to stop <laughs> but now also the Ram you've had two goals but uh, no appearances as yet not yet uh, the first goal I didn't actually expect to score so I wasn't prepared uh, the second goal was yeah, something else happened what? There goes some crazy Dutch girls. Um, yeah, hopefully it'll come back out. Maybe two more games. It's been put away for a couple of years, but yeah, if I can knock a few more in, I might sneak one in there, mate. Well, fingers crossed in the last two games, we'll just go for goal. Kookaburra's goal. And while you're doing that, we've got to issue a challenge here from Mossy and Robbo's Glasgow Gold. We've given a headband to the girls, and they've taken it on board, and it's actually proven to be an improving factor okay, okay. in performance. Yeah, so, right. From the Naked Runners, Mossy and Robbo, to Orchie, here's a headband in the Kookaburra's camp. You're beauty. Let's just see if it gets them the gold medal. Come on, boys. Always, always. Gold, gold for the cookers. And then we went out uh, to the big stadium at Hampden Park. You've got to go a long way out of the city <coughs> to get there. Uh, it took us a few legs, but uh, we got there and there was the athletics again. Yeah, it was, so it was a train and a bus to get out to Hampden. And, geez, the, the queues. Don't they handle the queues <laughs> so well out there? They go for miles. They and no one complains, Robbo, about the queues. Fact. No. Most, uh, I mean, the longest queues, but the best managed queues in there. They've got the uh, all sorts of defence force in there, the police helping you through. It's an absolute delight. They've got the biggest guns in Scotland out there. Um, they're I quite intimidating. Mine, mate. No, no, they're, these, these machine guns, they're quite intimidating, but they um, keep everyone happy. And we got in there, jumped on the tartan couch, did our little thing there, the pre-game routine, as we always do. Got a little bit wet as the rain came down. Uh, but Mossy, it was all about gold for Angie Ballard in the T54, 1500 metres. Uh, Ballard gold and a silver fern lee in the men's T54 1500 metres. They were the Aussie medals. Uh, very exciting. Great to see uh, Danny Samuels negotiate her way through to the discus final. Uh, that'll be tomorrow. Great night of action. David Rudisha was out on the track. Lots of other uh, great results as well. And um, yeah, mate, I'm pinching myself once again. Loving the athletics. And to those medalists, we salute you. But the man of all the talk throughout the games and across the town. He spent a huge night on the tiles. Uh, we actually went in search of Jumpy once again. And if you look to my right shoulder, you can see he's there, Robbo. 
He's back, and it felt like I tell you what we we sort of moped around a little bit today. It felt like part of our soul was missing. Flat. Without having could, jumpy. That's the way the whole. In fact, the stadium at the hockey, everyone was going, "Where's Jumpy?" Yep. That's that's true. And, and look, everyone was flat. Yes, the, the Scottish team were flat. That's why they uh, couldn't even put it up to the Aussies. Even at Hamden, people were asking, "Where's Jumpy? Where's Jumping?" And you know what became very apparent, Mossy. Uh, we thought, you know, we were a bit of a hit here in Glasgow. We're nothing. It's all about Jumpy. Uh, people use us as a way to get to Jumpy, and if, if, if Jumpy's not there, they don't care. Uh, so great to have him back. And I'll tell you what, it's a little bit of a story. So he, as you say, had a big night out with the Mickel and Roberts party, um, and he was scratching around for an iron brew this morning. I'll tell you what, he had the hangover to end all hangovers. But he got in touch with the team vet, and uh, Mel Panayotu, who is the marathon runner who works at Australia Zoo, she's the vet up there. Well, she tended to, to Jumpy, got the IV drip into him and an iron brew, and uh, he was feeling a million bucks. I think so, the, the iron brew was in the, the No, drip. I think that's all it was, yeah. 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 Uh, touch of saline, but mostly iron brew. Um, so she fixed him up. Nick Boyich took Jumpy under his big wing. Uh, obviously, they're part of the Jumping Brotherhood, and uh, he made sure that we got Jumpy back out to Hamden, and uh, he was put back in our arms. And I'll tell you, Mossy, I had to reinflate him. None of the athletes wanted to blow him up because they, you know, they're a bit conscious of the germs that get fly- thrown around in the village. So uh, he was very, very deflated. I've never seen him as deflated as that. He was handed back to us. I quickly put a bit of oxygen in him, just in time to have him fully inflated for him to sing the national anthem as Angie Ballard received her gold medal. And that was very, very stirring indeed. So yeah, that's where Jumpy's been. Um, who knows what's going to happen next? It's it's amazing to follow his journey. Yeah, and he's been a huge hit over here on social media as well. Now, it's time for us to turn our attention to my favourite segment. It is the Ginger Games. A bit of a challenge out there, Robbo. I know that um, I'm putting forward Angie Smith from mm. New Zealand. Uh, she made her way through in the 800 metres into the final. Oh, she's an adopted Aussie. Well, Aussie. Let's, uh, what I do want to tell you is all for those people out there, pretty much to qualify for New Zealand because they don't have much cash when it comes to athletics, you have to almost run a world record. So Angie, not far off it. Um, she got the plane over here, had to pay her own way, and uh, she's made herself into a final. So she's number one. Mm. Number two, believe it or not, it's me. That's yeah. right. I am actually <laughs> being questioned. My gingerhood has been pre- questioned on my own show. No, that's right, Mossy. And this came from a tweet that we got, and uh, it's from A. Kersley, at A. Kersley. And he said, uh, don't you know only a ginger can call another ginger ginger? Well, yes, we do know that. Uh, neither of you appear to qualify and uh, so we quickly replied and said, you know, Mossy's a fully paid member of the Ginger Club. Um, and he says he can't find a photo anywhere that shows Mossy looking ginger. So uh, if you're watching, here it is, folks. Doesn't get more ginger than that, surely. And uh, if you need any further proof, I'm sure Mossy will arrange that for you in a, a secluded corner. Uh, maybe it's Ham- Hamden Park tomorrow if you need to. Mossy can sort that out. But. So the huge smackdown, the UFC cage fight goes down between Angie Smith and Mossy. Let's put it out there to our studio audience. Let's put our hands up for Mossy. And those put their hands up for Angie. And you, sir, we can actually... And it's Mossy. Oh, it's Mossy. He's got it. Oh, well take done. it down once again. Well this is fantastic. Well played. I'm winning my own segment. I get to write the, uh, the script for that one. Now, huge shout out to our executive producers, Why Leave Town. Uh, they have a webinar coming up. So if you'd like to uh, find out more about that, get in contact with us um don't forget shop local keep the dollars local make sure that everyone has a chance to survive and while leave town are getting on board with the mascots as well we've spoken about clyde a lot on the show and obviously jumpy uh but they've got cardi and as you can see here cardi's adopted the skilt of the kilt here and uh, he's got the gold medal so well done cardi great to have you part of the team well, speaking of gold medals, Robbo, it's time to turn our attention to the charts to see who's been topping it. Why don't we start with uh, the one that most people see on the websites, uh, the newspapers and little handy notes that are passed under the desk at school. Yes, indeed. Well, where did Australia get to today? Well, we've mentioned Angie Ballard, so we know we got one, and that's all we got. So we've got the one there, and that's Angie Ballard, so that'll be going straight in. Thanks for uh, just letting us jump in there, Clyde. So uh, Australia, I can tell you now, if I just adopt my list, moves to 36. England, above them, 44 gold medals, 123 total. Australia, 36 gold, 112 total. Uh, Canada in third. Scotland, 14 gold medals, 43 total. So 
Mossy, it's getting close. But I can tell you we're still in front. The might of Scotch Railia. We've hit 50. 50 gold medals for Scotch Raise Australia. the bat for Scotch Railia. Well played, well played. England on 44, nipping at the Scotch Railian heels. So we've got to be careful. We've got to lift our games. We're calling on Scotland and Australia. You've got, we've got to lift our game because these English, they're, they're set to play some of their trump cards. So uh, that's going to be exciting in the next few days to see how that pans out, Mossy. Yeah, it promises to be an absolute belter. This Commonwealth Games is going to go down in history in the annals of Commonwealth Games across the times as being one that uh, is also innovative with Scotralia, but a lot of medals being handed mm. out as well. Now, a man who'll be looking to uh, get himself on the dais is Craig Burns, and as always, we like to hear from him. Um, this one, I spoke to him earlier today, got him to uh, recite a few lines uh, from a, a poem that he said is in his top 10 poems of all time. Farewell to our Scottish fame, farewell our ancient glory, farewell even to the Scottish name, say farmed in martial story, now sark rinse over Selway sands. Well, Mossy, in the big news on the strength of how good Burns' delivery of the Burns poems have been, he's been asked to recite uh, a selection of Burns poems live from Hamden Park in the next few days. As we uh, know, he's in action tomorrow, passing the baton in the men's 4x4. But between baton changes, he'll be reading from the Burns hymn book. Uh, so can't wait for that. What I've been told, and this is um, maybe factual, is the fact that um, they've got rid of the Proclaimers, um, who are huge hits at Hamden Park. They put it on, it's like karaoke. It's really, really good. And they're actually going to get Burns out a there. Word with, a word from Burns. Absolutely. Perfect. Now, tomorrow, Robbo, we uh, have to turn our attention to day nine. I'd like to find out from you uh, what you think uh, we're going to be up to and some of the highlights that are going to be out there in the track and the field and uh, also in the archery. Well, we're going to be keeping a close eye on Jumpy. We're going to be... Uh, he won't be going anywhere. No, nah, he'll, he'll be very tight with us. He'll be getting his usual amount of photos wherever we go. Uh, Mossy, I, I can't tell you much more about uh, the sports other than athletics. because that's about, where, is that archery? Well, I don't think it's in it. <laughs> I don't think it's in it. <laughs> that's but if, fact. You, if you want it to be, it could be. Um, it's it's the We've got the 18th sport, which is queuing. Maybe archery could get slipped in. If we don't have enough gold medals, maybe the organisers might need to organise archery. Don't tell the English. And that's a great way for us to get a little boost in the gold. But Athletics Mossy, another feast. I think this could be the biggest day of the games in terms of athletics. I'm calling triple gold. Australia, one, two, three gold medals. You can write these. You can you can put it in. Uh, you put it in Wikipedia right now. You can rub now. out the pencil and put in the pen. This is Simple. it. Here's a black texture if you need. Eleanor Patterson, women's high jump. No one will come close to her. Women's discus throw. Danny Samuels, no one will come close to her. In qualifying, I think she had a good 10 metres on the next person. Sally Pearson, women's 100 metre hurdles. No one will come close to her. Maybe the other two Aussies in the final, we hope. Silver and bronze there for McCann and Jenica. But, uh, Mossy, that's going to be electric, so I want to hear the anthem three times. Um, also in action, Ryan Gregson, Jeff Risley in the heats of the men's 1500. Joel Pocklington, that crazy uh, stuntman that sometimes jumps uh, with the with the pole vault. Well, he's in, he's in action as well, the men's pole vault final. And then there's the relays, 400s, 100s, and uh, the men's 10,000 as well with our own. Benny St. Lawrence, who has appeared nude. We hope to get a copy of the nude calendar soon. We might even have a signed copy of it to give away on tomorrow night's show. Well, that's it for day eight. We look forward to uh, bringing you all the action off the field and on the field on day nine. And why don't we leave the final thoughts for today with the Kookaburra crew. Let's not go. Let's Kookaburra.